Calling to order the regular meeting of the Wheeling Plan Commission for Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Commissioner Villanova. I'm here. Commissioner Berkey. Here. Commissioner Sprague is here. Commissioner Yednak. Here. Commissioner Hyken. Here. Commissioner Riles. Here. Chairman Johnson. Here. We have a full house tonight. All right. Ms. Nye, is any changes to the agenda? No changes. All right. And let's see. Citizens, concerns, and comments. Anybody from the public here to speak on anything? It appears not. So we will move on. Uh, we have no consent items, so we'll move right to the items for review. Starting with docket number PC21-22, minor building appearance approval for the installation of four new tanks at the Clorox Company, 1197 Willis Avenue. Mr. Nice. Yes, so um, the Clorox company um, is here to get just building appearance approval um, because they would like to install these four large tanks um, that are going to go inside the building, but they're going to extend above the roof line. And so you'll be able to see them, if you look at this photo on the left, you'll be able to see them from the road and here's a picture of the front of the building and you'll see them sticking out from the road. So that requires a parents review um, from the plan commission because uh, the front of the building is being modified, you know, visible portions of the front of the building. Um, there's no other changes to the site plan, no changes to parking. These, again, these tanks are being put inside the building. Um, and uh, we do not have any proposed conditions. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Yes. Come on up. State your name and business address for the record. Yes, my name. You can is take Mary. your mask off while you're oh, sure. up there talking. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Darren Henderson. I'm the plant engineering manager at the Hidden Valley site on. 1197 Willis Avenue. Um, Hen Valley is a wholly owned subsidiary of, Clor of the Clorox Company. We've been in Wheeling for over 30 years. And we employ over 200 employees. The project covenant's application is to install, as Marcy mentioned, four new soybean oil tanks, the tops of which will penetrate past the existing roof line. The purpose of this additional soybean oil storage will enable us to better withstand service interruptions that we begin to see as a result of either rail car or tanker truck delivery delays. So are there any questions about the project? Any questions about the changes? Yeah, well, we'll go through the commission real quick and see if they have anything. Okay. Um, Commissioner Riles, let's start at that end. Um, it, it seems uh, <clears throat> self-explanatory. It seems like it makes sense. Um, I don't see any particular uh, issues, but I guess just a little bit of explanation as to why so high that penetrates through the roof. So in order to get the amount of storage capacity that we'd like to have, we had to have tanks that are taller than the roof line. So the current building, um, the, the tanks are going to be at a height of about 45 feet. Our current building obviously isn't that high, so we had to extend past the current roof line. We didn't see a need to actually make the building larger because the only thing that really needed to extend past that roof line were these tanks. So we looked at both options, but the easier option was to basically have the tanks extend beyond the roof line. So it, that was the best choice from engineering and um, also appearance design. So is this, uh, is this particular option, is this something that uh, is customary in the, in the industry, so to speak, or is this a unique? It's not, it's not unique, no, it's customary. There's nothing unique about it. The design is fairly standard, so we don't we don't anticipate any problems either in construction or maintenance by having these tanks above the roof line. 
Okay. Um, I guess I forgot to mention that um, they did initially propose the tanks outside. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. And um, it would have uh, taken, they did look at it a couple different areas and it would have taken up uh, parking uh, that they really couldn't you lose. Um, so this was one of their options. Okay. So that's how they did end up yes. with looking at the inside option. <laughs> okay. From a maintainability standpoint, it's much better to have the tanks inside versus outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. Um, any intention to put any lettering there in the future? I'm sorry, or maybe lettering? Like mm -hmm. Maybe like... Yeah, so each, each tank will have a ladder, which will allow us to access the top of the tanks, and there will be a railing around the top sure. of the tanks also. That was my, my accent, I apologize. I'm talking about letters. Letters? You know, like a signs or anything so, like that? Commercial, 5G, anything? We have not... It's, there's a potential that we may put Hidden Valley on the tanks, but we actually have not decided that yet. So they will be painted white. We may just leave them white as they are, or if, if we do anything, it would be just um, adding some additional signage that would let folks know that it was the Hidden Valley site. So nothing more than that. Got it. But we haven't decided that yet. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Darren. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my questions are more for information than anything else. Uh, how did you get the product before or now before you have the tanks? How, how was that? So, so we currently have two tanks already inside the building, mm -hmm. but they're smaller tanks. Okay. We, we have our soybean oil delivered two different ways. We have a rail spur, so we do have rail cars around the side of our building. We get some of our oil, the majority of our oil, from the rail spur. We also have tanker trucks which come in from time to time and also can deliver. So we can deliver two, two, by two methods. One is tanker trucks via semi-delivery or via our rail spur. The delivery will not change. We will still have the same delivery methods. This will only increase the amount of oil that we can store on site. So we currently have some storage on site. This will increase that storage by about threefold. So we're not using a different ingredient, not <clears throat> changing our delivery method. We're just enabling ourselves to store more on site. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that there are some existing tanks outside now on the west side. Yes. Um, are those staying or are, you re are those getting replaced? Or? Those are staying and those are not currently okay. soybean. All, different. The soybean oil tanks are, are both inside. Those are not soybean oil okay. tanks. So they will be staying. I see. And then uh, my last question, I'm not sure if you can answer this or not, but... Okay. Uh, your company was before us for an expansion in a parking lot on yes. the uh, south side. Yes. Is that still in the works? That is currently not still in the works. I can't say that will never happen, but for a number of reasons, we decided not to move forward with that parking lot expansion. <coughs> so that is not currently in our near-term plan. I see. Okay, thank you very much. That's all, right. all I have. All right. Commissioner Yednick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't really have anything I think... Uh, looks acceptable to me, I think, because it's a primarily industrial area. I don't think it's going to change the composition of the neighborhood too much, and it sounds like you have very valid reasons for wanting to do this. Um, I, I like the suggestion of the sign, you know, come back for an approval on that. I think that would look kind of cool, that green sign on the white background. So. Yes. <laughs> but uh, thanks for staying in the village, and uh, good luck with the project. Thank you. Commissioner Berkey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have any questions. I think it's pretty pretty cut and dry and seems to be the best uh, option for what you're trying to do. So, yes. All right, Commissioner Hyken. I have no questions. Very good. Um, <clears throat> so all four tanks are soybean oil? Correct. Okay. Any issues from the fire department, uh, Inspector Nemec? No, none at this time. <clears throat> all right, any other questions from our group? And Marcy, there were no conditions? Not correct. All right, then I would uh, entertain a motion. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Not sure who it was down there. Uh, Yednik. Yednik. Commissioner Yednik. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. 
Okay, so right. you're done. You can just, um, when you're ready, move on to the building permit and okay. go from there. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, next up we have several items for the same petitioner. Uh, we'll start with docket number 2021-39A, <clears throat> special use for cannabis cultivation center, NBCG Partners, LLC, at 160 West Hinch Road. Mr. Secretary. NBCG Partners LLC Lisi seeks a special use as required <coughs> under Title 19, Zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-10.060, non-residential use regulations and associated sections to permit a cannabis cultivation center in the I-3 <coughs> General Industrial Zoning District for the property located at 160 West Hintz Road. A special use as defined in the zoning code is a use parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to the potential for negative impacts on surrounding properties. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the plan commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that the request meets the standards for a special use as established in Title 19. <coughs> Commission chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting materials submitted, the Plan Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Ms. Nye, anything? Um, yeah, I just want to, I'll go over quickly how we're going to do these dockets. Okay. So first, um, we'll do the special use and uh, we'll uh, let them do their pr um, presentation and then we'll do questions and then we'll take the vote and then we'll move on to the four zoning variations and we'll discuss them all at the same time and then take the vote one at a time and close those dockets. And then we'll do the minor site plan um, docket. Um, so we kind of break it out into three different ones. Um, I really don't have anything besides it's a special use for a cannabis cultivation center. Um, and we do not have any proposed uh, conditions. Okay. Is a petitioner or petitioners I assume you're both going to do some speaking, so I'll have to yes. swear, swear you both in. <clears throat> you brought uh, a blow up. What plan is a place you like this in front? Or? Yeah, I don't know. I, is it anything different than what we have no, in our packet? No. Do we I'll just need? set it here. Yeah, set it there. In case you need to point something out. <clears throat> Come on up, got to swear you in. You can swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth. Yes. And then state your names and business addresses for the record. Ross Moriali, uh, 1137 West Monroe, Chicago, Illinois. Jay Stewart, 2236 Catherine Street, Northbrook, Illinois. Thank you. All right, you can give us your presentation. Great. And remember, we're, we're focusing mostly on the special use at this point. Okay. Uh, good evening, members of the Planning Commission. Appreciate the opportunity to present on our project this evening. I'll be brief um, and then open it up to questions. Uh, the project is a craft grow use. Um, it's going to be one of the new craft grow licenses that were recently issued by the Department of Agriculture. Um, and the, the building is uh, very suitable for it uh, in size. Uh, Square footage, the ceiling heights, uh, just the building in general is is is, is perfect for our use. Um, the um, we have a floor plan, which which you have, um, and it, it lays out um, all of the uh, aspects of the interior, which I think you're less concerned about, and the exterior. Um, the biggest 
use that we, the biggest um, need that we have on the exterior is for HVAC equipment. Um, I think that ties into one of the variances, mm -hmm. uh, one of the four that we're asking for. Um, so trying to not go into that uh, and just talk about the special use to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, are there any questions about the use itself uh, of a cultivation center? Well, we can go down the line and see. Uh, let's start at the other end. Commissioner Hyken. Uh Thank you for considering, Willie. I, my question is the disposal of the cannabis waste. I read the whole thing. I'm a little confused with that. Can you just go over that briefly? <laughs> yes. Uh, so state law regulates that you have to dispose of waste in a certain way. Um, the waste material must be ground. So you, you harvest the plant, mm -hmm. and you have stalks, stems, and then you have some plant uh, leafy material that's not used in the operations of the, of the business. That material is, is stored in, inside. It's, uh, when it comes to the waste destruction, it's destroyed, ground up into a, a, like a tree grinder, essentially. And then it's mixed with um, soil, essentially. And it's 51% soil, 49% cannabis waste, all ground mixed together. And you have this mixture at the end that's no more than 49% ground up cannabis materials. And in this situation, in some instances, we would till it into the soil, depending on, and get a tractor and then kind of uh, get rid of the waste that way. We're not going to do that here, obviously. Um, so there's an exterior uh, garbage dis waste disposal area and we'll contract with uh, uh, a waste disposal company that can dispose of that material. So it'll all be inside. Um, Post-destruction, when it's combined with non-cannabis materials until it's picked up, it'll never be on the exterior of the building. Okay. Did that clarify any of the For the material? most part, yeah, that clarified. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, thank you. Commissioner Berkey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, okay. I've been called worse. I do have one question. So it doesn't appear that anything, any changes are going to be made to the outside of the building under the HVAC systems. Um, but aside from that, is there any plan for, is, is the building going to be identifiable as a <coughs> cannabis cultivation center from the casual observer driving by or walking by, or will it be pretty inconspicuous? Typically, there's not signs that uh, have a name on it. Um, we've never done that in the past in any of the other cultivation centers that we've been involved with. So, no, it'll look, we're going to get rid of the ASCO letters that are on there. I believe it's ASCO that's currently on there from the previous company, but there won't be any signage on the front. And other than seeing a lot of equipment on the exterior, not on the frontage side, but on the back, you wouldn't suspect, and you could just think it's like a cold storage place too, I guess. They have a lot of HVAC equipment. So nothing to, 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 Mark it as a as a grow facility. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yednick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the very thorough presentation, um, the project description. I, I learned a lot about the cannabis industry. I found it interesting. Um, I, one, just a curiosity question: Are you two some of the executives that are described in this? Like, there's a general manager, the cultivation manager. I mean, do you fulfill one of those roles? I might have missed it in your introduction. I don't believe my role was listed in there. Okay. Those are mostly hired uh, staff, I believe. Oh, you're one of the owner representatives? Or the... the the CEO couldn't be here tonight. He had a pre-planned honeymoon. Um, he was ready to, to go for a previous hearing, but we weren't ready. <laughs> okay. um, and I'm glad because Marcy and the staff really did a good job on uh, you know, pushing us to dial in the design. The, the one thing that I did have a question, though, was a clarification, because a lot of our, our staff report describes it as a craft center, but a cultivation center, and there's a different level of volume of material. But then your project description letter pretty much talks about a craft grower. So are you a craft grower or a cultivation center, or are you going to have both in the on site? There's... I can answer that if okay. you want. Okay, so the answer is they're kind of both. So they're, they have a craft grower license from the state, which currently places a max of 5,000 square feet of flowering leafy material area. Um, however, 
our code allows for both a craft grower and a cultivation center and cultivation center doesn't have a minimum square feet it just has a maximum so they fit within both definitions so for zoning purposes they're getting a cultivation center because they could always get an upgraded license from the state in the future and this would this facility allows them to grow with that license okay i think the prior petitioner mm -hmm. that we reviewed they were limiting it to craft period because i think their square footage was less and yeah. less space and um they were in two different zoning districts so we actually gave them <coughs> a craft grow and a cultivation okay. center all right so yeah that so just confused because something. i knew we did talk about it the last time it yeah came up. um th th there was just clarification so right so just to so i understand today you're going to be a craft grower with the hope and the potential to expand your business if you can get this, the state licensing and then you have the square footage available then Okay. Yeah, I think between the village attorney and what you said, that sounds right. Okay, all right, all right, great. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Ross. Good evening. <clears throat> Jay. Uh, there, you explained about the waste. Uh, there, there definitely won't be any burning of any kind of waste at all? No. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing I was wondering about, uh, you, you explained about your security um, and uh, off hours, it'll be security surveillance, correct? Correct. Um, Cameras, motion sensors. And I was just wondering what the response, what your security response is with, to that video surveillance if something is to uh, happen at your place. So I would think that the alarm would, if it was a burglary type attempt, the alarm would be the first thing that goes off. And then it's with the police that would be responding. Mm -hmm. um, we would also be alerted because the alarm, the monitoring company would call us. Um, we usually have somebody on management that lives within, you know, five, six, eight, ten miles of the facility, ideally. Um, that would be the, the company response. Mm -hmm. But I, in most instances, a lot of times it's just a, a I mean, 90 percent alarm. of the alarms we get it's a mistake so we get the call we're like nothing's going on the, the police department might call us we're like no it's okay don't worry about it um but that's how i think we would have staff that could respond in 15 minutes or so but i think it'd be secondary response mm -hmm. would be the idea anyway and then it it's directly connected to the police also for alarms or whatever Yes, if that's the most efficient way to do it. Uh, some municipalities we've worked with want us to connect to a neighboring municipality because they work together. But assuming, yeah, wheeling uh, the police department here, and we haven't had that conversation, but assuming that they do want it to go direct there, that's how we have to do the alarm okay. go direct. Thank you. That's Thank all you. I have. Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. Well, um, my biggest concern is how loud, loud it's going to get and if we're going to smell anything. Um, I, I checked some specification on a handler, and it's going to get pretty loud. Maybe you can address that? Um, I, it's not, noise has never been an issue. Um, I know that the decibels, I'm not an expert in, in this part. Me I either. could maybe text somebody. I don't know if I can get an answer tonight. Um, I don't think the noise is going to be an issue in that okay. setting, uh, especially the way to the west there's nobody it's the train tracks mm -hmm. to the north it's the back of our neighboring building which there's nothing out there and there's part to the east we have our whole parking lot their whole parking lot plus we're not putting equipment on the east it's all going on the west and on the north oh, so it's not going to be a i don't yeah I, I can't speak to exactly i i've been out around these equipment it's not like alarmingly loud it's you can have a conversation um, and they cycle on and off too, so it's not not constant. But I think based on where the equipment's being situated, that it'll have no 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 noise impact on anybody. Good. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Riles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, uh, I I don't have any questions. Uh, but thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> to echo. Um, Commissioner Yednick, thank you for a very complete narrative on this. We, I also learned a lot. <clears throat> um, go over the cannabis waste thing again. There was some question about being outside. 
when I um, had a discussion with staff. It it won't be. Um, <coughs> if you look in the upper right hand corner of your drawing, you maybe don't have it. Um, it's up on the screen. This is where the destruction will occur. So we have a grinder in here on wheels, a small tree grinder. Um, this is also where we harvest. So everything's located uh, in good proximity to one another. You harvest, then you take uh, material that we're going to further process or sell as flour, and those will go into uh, you know, cure and, and dry rooms over here. Um, and then everything that's going to be destroyed is going to go into the destruction room, and it's going to get staged. And then typically we use, I think they're bigger garbage cans with the lids on them, mm -hmm. um, outdoor garbage cans. You fill that with the material, and you get a couple of those. You have a, a mixing bin, uh, like a horse trough, really, we've used in the past, round, and then you kind of grind the material into that, and then you add non cannabis material too, and you mix it up, and then that batch is, is, is ready to be destroyed, and you put it into separate container and you wait for the garbage company to come um, and then they would come in here pick it up and then we put it in there so it's never outside I mean, the truck would pull here maybe in loading a little but it's not it's not going to be stored outside no 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 it's going to be stored yeah. it'll be stored here pre-destruction <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, and while destruction is occurring and then it'll be stored here after it's it's uh, the properly proper mixture is there it's where it's okay it's legally by state law, for no more than 49% cannabis waste that's ground up. That all be in this area, locked. Yeah, I think staff's question or concern was that it was going to be stored outside in the trash enclosure. Yes, after it's ground up and everything. So in our, for the, we did add a proposed condition for the minor site plan that there be a sign added and we can talk about that later. Okay. It, you mentioned other cultivation centers that you've worked on. Whereabouts? Uh, in Illinois um, and in other states, too. I was um, one of the original uh, licensees of one of the first cannabis companies in Illinois in 2015. Um, I stepped away from that three years ago. Um, still an owner. We're publicly traded, that company. Uh, and I'm working with social equity groups on taking like that big company experience and kind of helping them execute and develop facilities like this and operate them and all that good stuff. Okay, thank you. And our architect has done <clears throat> stuff all over the country. Uh, I mean, he works for one of my friends. We went to high school together. Uh, he did our first facility here in 2015, and he's probably done as many facilities as any architect in the whole country. I won't embarrass you by asking how you both got into a pot business if you went to high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a lawyer. It was an opportunity, and I, I'm a business guy. I know my high school days. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions from the commission? I see none. Do we have conditions on the special use, Ms. Nice? No. Then I would entertain a motion to approve this one. So moved. Second. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Yednak. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. All right, before we move on, we have to close docket 2021-39A. Need a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Berkey. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Yadnak? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Okay, now we have four variations that the petitioner is seeking for this project. Uh, we'll open up all four for discussion by the petitioner. Um, and the commission. Then we'll recap and vote on each one individually. <clears throat> so first up is 2021-39B, variation to permit a re reduction of the required minimum rear yard setback from 17 feet to six feet associated with this project. 2021-39C, variation to permit reduction of minimum green space from the required 25% 
minimum to 16% associated with this project. Um, then we have 2021-39D, <clears throat> variation permit an increase in <coughs> maximum fence height from 6 feet to 8 feet. And 2021-39E, variation to permit a reduction in the minimum number of required off-street parking spaces from 95 to 56. Mr. Sprague. <laughs> MBCG Partners LLC Lisi seeks variation is required under Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code Chapter 19-07 industrial districts and associated sections to permit a reduction of the required minimum rear yard setback from 17 feet to 6 feet for the property located at 160 West Hints Road. 39C NBCG Partners LLC Lisi seeks variation is required under Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code Chapter 19-07 industrial districts and associated sections to permit a reduction in the minimum green space requirement from 19% 25% required minimum to 16% for the property located at 160 West Hints Road. 39D NBCG Partners LLC Lisi seeks variation is required under Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code 19 10 use regulations and associated <coughs> sections to permit an increase in the maximum fence height from 6 feet to 8 feet for the property located at 160 West Hints Road. And 39E NBCG Partners LLC Lisi seeks a variation is required under Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-11, General Development Standards and Associated Sections to permit a reduction in the minimum number of required off-street parking spaces from 95 spaces to 56 spaces for the property located at 160 West Hints Road. A zoning variation is intended to be a method of adjustment to equalize Regulations where the zoning code has created an unnecessary hardship. A variation is designed to allow affected property owners the same rights and privileges that others enjoy in the same zoning district. In order to be granted a variation, a petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the plan commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the individual's situation is unique or unusual. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that their request for variation meets the standards established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting material submitted, the Plan Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Ms. Nyes, anything on these before the petitioner starts? Uh, no. All right. You can discuss all four of those variations. <laughs> okay, I will. Um, they're all related and all driven by the same issue. And when I started off, I talked about HVAC equipment. Um, and that's uh, the biggest expenditure in any of these cultivation centers is that, or craft grows, whatever you want, any grow facilities. Um, so the setback um, issue uh, the need for that is if you look at the north side of the property, um, all back in here, there's just no other place to place the HVAC equipment without a setback. Um, so that talks about the um, need for the setback, the, the green space. I believe the site as is is currently under two, if I remember correctly. Um, and then again, what's driving that is the need to use the concrete on the west side and the north side of um, the building to um, bring straight stable. What was that, Jay? Yes, and the third one's the fence height. Again, driven by HVAC equipment, <clears throat> standard is six. Um, it's, we agree that it should be concealed <laughs> to the extent that it can be. Uh, if we go to eight feet, we can, uh, you won't be able to see the HVAC equipment because the HVAC equipment is less than eight feet tall. Um, there'll be gates that lock. We do want to, other than aesthetics and, and appearance, we want the, the HVAC equipment to be secure. There's a lot of uh, valuable metals and aluminums and 
in today's world, all that stuff you know can be stolen, and that would be you know catastrophic to the operations of the facility, and then a huge economic uh, hardship too. Uh, and then replacing that equipment, which is very long lead item time. So we're going to make that a, a, a secure area that's going to have you know cameras, uh, locked doors, um, you know, like, and we're going to use uh, composite fencing, as shown in, in what we in what we submitted, <clears throat> that will match the exterior color of the building. Very good. And then parking, <clears throat> again, uh, we need more land space for HVAC equipment, um, and that eats up some of the parking. Uh, we, based on the employees that we project having to start, you know, in the 30 range up to, you know, 40, up to 50 as further expansions in law allowed, typically what we do is run two shifts too at some point. So I, I, don't, ever, I don't foresee parking being an issue with 56 spots. Uh, even when the facility is fully operational. And I think if there were issues, there is some uh, opportunity to add some potentially uh, on the uh, south side of the building even, like off of Hintz Road potentially in that part of the property. If there would be a need, but I, I don't foresee that happening. Okay. <clears throat> so I think I covered all four. Uh, <laughs> are there questions about any <clears throat> of those? Well, we'll see. Uh, let's Start with Commissioner Riles. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I just want to ask a layperson's question. Uh, the, the, the equipment, I mean, how, how big is it and, and how much of it um, is it required to, to, to get the job done? So uh, it's all done by tonnage. So you, you, have, you have flower rooms that, that generate um, so much heat. You have all these lights. And you need to cool all this space. Uh, so as you expand, your need for HVAC expands. So a facility like this requires, at the end of the day, probably over 1,000 tons of cooling. Um, the, the air handler units, which are abbreviated AHUs, those are roughly, all the specs are in there. I think they're maybe 10 feet by 8 feet, or 6 feet by 6 feet, something like that. Um, the chillers are, are bigger. There's fewer of them. Uh, but those would be 500 uh, ton chillers, um, which would be situated in the northwest corner of the property, which is the most remote corner of the property. Um, so yeah, it's large equipment, um, but there's no other way to cool the space. Uh, part of, you know, when you grow plants indoors, it, you need a lot of cooling because you have to really control the environment. And if you don't get it right, and the system's not designed right, and it's not, you know, you don't have enough capacity, it's just your whole operation is going to be a disaster, and you're never going to have, you're, going to, you're never going to have the ability to, to, to grow the right product to make the whole thing work. And so was this kind of like factored in, uh, you know, initially as far as your location and, and the, the, the job you, you need to perform, was this all factored in? For sure, the HVAC equipment is, is the need to place that is one of the, that and ceiling height are the two key things, because we do vertical grows. So we want, we need at least like 19, 20 feet. Um, so yeah, when we looked at the facility, part of it is where does the HVAC equipment go? We talk to our architect, talk to the engineers, and say, where can we place all of this? And then we come up with a site plan, and then it was a back and forth with uh, Marcy and and the fire inspector, Bob, over there, um, about, you know, where best to put it all. Okay. Did I answer your question? That, yeah, it's, yes, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. Um, I think the building behind it doesn't even have a windows, right? Don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, and the fire department doesn't have any issue with it, neither. With setback. You know, no, as, <clears throat> as far as the equipment is concerned, um, it's actually preferable that it's on the ground for us. A lot of times when we go for uh, smoke investigations in the building, it typically has to do with air handling the units, belts burned up on it, which creates smoke in the building. Uh, so it's actually safer for our guys instead of having to go up on the roof and investigate that it's on the ground. It's actually safer for our, our operations to be on well, the ground. Well, you know better. No other questions. Thank you. Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see here. That your uh, rear yard setback, 
um, your electrical service is in the, on the north side of the building? Correct. So <coughs> there's most likely a utility easement back there? Um, I think so. I've just I haven't uh, seen it though like marked on any any drawing that I've seen. Does will your uh, setback encroach into that easement? Do you know? I know there's overhead lines back there, but <clears throat> I don't know if it's on my my uh, what really I'm, don't know what I'm eventually there. getting to is <coughs> just that you understand if you're granted this variation and you do have like your fence, your nice eight foot fence is in that easement, if the electric company needs to get in there, they won't have any problems taking down whatever's in their way. <laughs> if it's in the easement. Just so you're aware of that. Like placed actually in it. Yes. We'll double check. Okay. Thanks for bringing All that right. up. Um, your, your fences that you want at eight foot, um, that won't hurt you need air circulation for your HVAC equipment. Is it will that we do? Will that um, impede the uh, circulation or air that they need? The engineers didn't didn't think so. No? Okay. Because uh, we had sufficient space between the, the fence and the equipment, mm -hmm. which is kind of tied into the setback again too. But there was this engineering conversation about <coughs> you know how what is the proper airflow that we need <coughs> over this equipment. Okay. So I think we've addressed it. Um. And then you, you don't expect to ever be more than 40 employees at any time? At any one shift? I could see it being a little higher than that. I don't see it being more than 50 on any one shift. Um, the reason why I ask is the ver parking variation, sp the spaces, you want to reduce it down to 56. Correct. And if you're going to have up to 50 employees, that leaves... Six left for. You ever have visitors or typically contractors not, or not uh, contractors more so before we have employees. So by the you got to think of it as a continuum in time. In the beginning, all the contractors are there for the first year. You probably only have twenty employees because you're just ramping up. As you continue to expand, you're mm -hmm. going to have more employees, but there's less construction going on. So I, I don't. And then at some point, you go to two shifts. And you kind of split it a little bit. So okay. in somewhere between that 40 and 50 number, you, we kind of figure that out. Okay. Say, okay, it's a time to go to two shifts and, you know, have a shift that starts, it goes from, you know, two to 10. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, six to four, however it works out. Um, but that'll be a decision that we make once we get to the point to where, you know, it's a good problem to have. Uh, mm -hmm. I think everyone in the group would look forward to, okay, hey, we, we have all these employees, and are we going to do two shifts now or more parking, or what are we going to do? Okay. But I think, to be honest, that's probably a couple years out, mm -hmm. only because there's state law that needs to evolve a little bit more to really allow us to capitalize on the size of the building from a, a growing standpoint. Thank you. That's all I have. Commissioner Yednick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it might have been in the materials, and I don't recall. Um, <coughs> Based on everything you're putting in here, are you buying this building or are you going to lease the building? Purchase. Okay, all right, so it was owned. Um, and the, the fence, I like the material. I, we just read our condo with Trex decks and it's nice. And I, I think the eight foot height, I think that might allevi alleviate some of the, maybe the noise concerns. That would be a, a bit of a sound block. The only concern, and the, the rest of the variations, I mean, everything you're describing seems reasonable to me. Parking. Might be a bit of a concern, but I guess that's down the road. And you can figure out maybe share some space with the neighbors if you had to, if you got, if you grew that big. The one thing I was wondering with the fence, though, is when I'm looking at the drawings, and this is more directed to the fire commissioner, um, you're going to be ending up closing off that whole building, and so if you exited the building, I only saw it looks to me like three external gates in the fence. Um, is there any concern from the fire department if they had to evacuate the building in every different direction that for one they'd go out of the building into the contained area with the fencing and then there's you know like in the very north side it looks like there's a door in the building in the middle and they'd have to either go right 
to go out by the trash or they have to go all the way in the left corner there's a gate there and same thing while I'm there there's no external doors on the on the west side of the building it doesn't look like oh there's one down in the bottom yeah I think corner. there's a, there's actually um, one or two possibly on that on the west side but yeah there's two on the west side um, yeah, we did look at the exiting based upon the occupancy load of the building and uh, we did just uh, make some concerns about making sure there was a, a hard surface leaving from the exit doors, doors out to the parking lots. Um, we had one other concern about as on the west side, the further south door, that uh, they move the exit possibly north of that furthest south air handling unit just so the exit is not going uh, next to the CO2 tank. We prefer that the exit goes straight out uh, above that last air handling unit to the north of it okay. and then the, have the opening of the exit of the fence right out on that west side there. And I'm, I'm assuming if they wanted to make it a secure fence they'd have to have push bar doors Correct. inside yes. the fence. Correct, yes. Exactly. The locking is only going to be outside the fence. Then. I mean you're planning for that, right? Um, that's all. I just looked in, and it looked like there was maybe a confusing egress for the employees if they had to evacuate. But uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Berkey. Uh, that's all. I, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hyken. My questions have been asked and answered. So, all right. Thank you for the uh, very detailed. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> When you first start up as a craft grower, is all this HVAC equipment needed, or is this what the max would be if you become a full-blown cultivation center? Yeah, this is more <coughs> fully built out. Okay, so, so it'll be, but you have to. We have to design it so right. we can add to it. So we start with the complete layout, and then you know, by the time we start this next session in Springfield they could increase we're working on legislation right now with some sponsors to get it to 30,000 square feet so okay. if that happens by the time we're doing this the law will be changed so it's very fluid uh, and we're you know willing to quickly adapt to it and deploy more capital towards it and you know maximize the opportunity all right <clears throat> Any other questions from the commission? Nope. Nope. All right. Let's get to voting on each one. Motion on 2021 39, 39B. Is there any conditions, Marcy? No. All right. Motion? So. so second. Tatiana. Tatiana and Yedek. And Yedek. <clears throat> Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Valerie, do we need to close each one as we go? No, we open them all at the same time. I think okay. we can close them all at the same time. Then <clears throat> are there any conditions on 39C? No. And I need a motion. So moved. Second. Blanova and Yednek again? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Yednek? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. All right. Any conditions on 39D? No. Need a motion. So moved. Second. Berkey this time. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Yadnak? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Any conditions on 39E? Nope. Nope. So moved. Second. Get it? <clears throat> Who was the motion? Uh, <laughs> Yadnak. <laughs> he wanted it this time. Competition now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Yednick? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. All right, lastly on these variations, we need a motion to close uh, 2021 39B, 39C, 
39D and 39E. So moved. Second. I don't know who got the second on that one. Berkey. Berkey. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Yadnak. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Lastly, we have docket PC 21-23, the minor site plan and appearance approval for improvements associated with the Cannabis Cultivation Center, NBCG Partners, 160 West Hens. Ms. Nyes. Um, yeah, one thing on this one um, is that with our latest submittal, we had the addition of the CO2 tank down on the southwest corner. Um, normally, we would have elevations for that, but um, we did not at this time, so we are excluding that from this approval because those ele that elevation and appearance requires the plan commission's approval. So um, I would like to, uh, we have one condition already, and I'd like to add a second condition, which I'll read in a second. Um, and so that'll exclude the CO2 tanks. The fence around it is, is still fine. And then they'll have to come back for minor site plan and appearance approval for those CO2 tanks and show the elevations and the height and what they're gonna look like. So the two proposed conditions were, number one, the building permit plan shall include a sign detail indicating the installation of a sign on the exterior face of the trash enclosure which reads office waste only or similar language. And number two, this approval does not include the proposed CO2 tanks and the petitioner shall return to the PC for minor site plan and appearance <coughs> approval for this element. Uh, that first condition is the same condition we put on the previous cultivation center. Just to, I don't know if that's encouraging people or <laughs> um, trying to deter people from going, trying to get into the trash enclosure. Hopefully it's not like a wet paint sign. <laughs> right. I think I think everyone thought that it was a deterrent. So. All right. Would you like to say anything about the site plan? Um, I, mean, I think we've talked, we've talked oh. pretty much touched on it. Um, I, those conditions are fine. Um, we'll add the sign, no problem. Okay. You, you, you provide a little more detail on what you're looking for. With the sign? It's in oh, it's already in there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just um, and the CO2 tanks. Yes, we'll come back for that. That was a uh, an oversight on our uh, part by not adding it sooner, uh, but not an issue. This is going to take, you know, six to nine months to get this place operational, especially with lead times on, on items. So we're designing it, finishing the the floor plan now, and be working through ordering the HVAC equipment probably by the first of the year, maybe by February, and then off to the races. But we'll be back for the CO2 tanks, probably okay. spring, summer. <clears throat> Commissioner Hyken, anything on the uh, site plan? Nope, I'm good, thank you. Commissioner Berkey? No questions. Commissioner Yednick? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Sprague? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, nothing for me. Commissioner Blanova? Quick one. <laughs> containers, I noticed there's some containers there. Uh, no, they are gone. They're gone? Uh, oh, yeah. Then two. Last. I was there and they, they then no, no, no longer there. That no. You guys took care of that or? No, I think the existing property owner, current owner does, did. No, no Mr. Person. Riles. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Um, note about the CO tank. Um, are you adding any lighting? It, it seems like there wasn't that much lighting for the security that you're looking for. Well, we, we the cameras we're using the exterior are night vision cameras, okay. um, and they have very good range and very low light environments. Um, we weren't planning on adding any lighting. I think that if, like I said, this is going to be a decent construction timeline. If the, we start the project and determine once we get into the security part of it, that hey, we need a little more lighting to make this work, we would come back. I'm get thinking back along with our CO2 tank. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about that eight foot fence. You know, you're gonna have a lot of dark areas back there. Between all the equipment and the high wall. Uh, so something to consider. We may very well be back for that. Okay. Um any other questions from the group? 
All right, Marcy, read the conditions again and take a vote. Uh, number one, the building permit plan shall include a sign detail indicating the installation of a sign on the exterior face of the trash enclosure, which reads office waste only or similar language. Number two, this approval does not include the proposed CO2 tanks and the petitioner shall return to the plan commission for minor site plan and appearance approval for this element. Very good. Do I hear a motion? So move. Second. Commissioner Blanova, Commissioner Berkey. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Yednak. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. Welcome to Wheeling. Well, thank you. So you or, will. Or at least um, phase one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, special use and all the variations will go to the village board on December 6th. And then the minor site plan is final approvals here. Perfect. So then when you come back that uh, for the CO2 and maybe the lighting, that too will just be a plan commission meeting. Okay. And we'll touch base before the board meeting. Okay, sounds good. Thank good you, luck. gentlemen. It was a very good presentation. Thank you. Appreciate everyone's time. And the thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give them a couple minutes here. <clears throat> All right, next up we have the uh, docket number 2021-25, final plan unit development PUD of London Crossing Phase 1, Wingspan Development Group, LLC, at 889 to 903 West Dundee Road. Miss Nice. <coughs> I wasn't ready. I need a minute there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, so I will just uh, briefly go over what we normally go over for these. Um, so uh, Wingspan is back before you um, for London Crossing Phase 1, which will consist of Lot 2 for the School District 21 Administration Building. The remaining phases, the commercial and the residential townhome, um, are going to come back probably um, potentially at the next meeting. and. This will allow the school district to keep moving forward and meet their construction uh, timeline. Um, and they could potentially meet up at the next village board meeting and be back together again. Um, so again, this is just lot two and just for the uh, final PUD. Um, so the overall project received preliminary PUD approval here at the PC on August 11th of this year, went to the village board on August 16th. Um, there were a series of condition or yeah conditions. Most of them um, only or only a few of them related to the school district um, piece. Um, and the petitioner has submitted um, additional materials or additional items that we had asked that were outlined in the staff report uh, relating to the uh, building material identification and a trash enclosure. Um, the code relief that's being requested for just lot two is outlined in your packet, but I will read that. Um, for setbacks, it is uh, the MXT, which goes by the B3 General Commercial Zoning District, calls for side yard setbacks of greater, of the greater of 15 feet or the building height, which would be around 54.67 feet. Um, and the London Crossing plan provides a side yard setback of 32 feet. Uh, the MXT B3 General Commercial Zoning District, based on building size, calls for 162 parking spaces. The proposed uh, lot two is providing 112 spaces. And the, oh, I already said that. No, no, I didn't. MXT B3 General Commercial Zoning District calls for a building height limit of 50 feet and the proposed building will be 54.7 feet. Um, so uh, the petitioner has submitted uh, final PUD plans for lot two that are in conformance with the preliminary PUD plans that were approved under ordinance 5429. Um, let's see what else. 
I already talked about the two items that um, were outstanding that staff had noted. The petitioner can go over those two with regards to the key for the building materials and the trash enclosure. And there were three items in the staff report that uh, we pointed out that we had wanted the plan commission to plan commissioners to discuss. And I think after everybody goes through everything, we can do uh, one at a time, go through these for a poll. The three items were um, to consider, number one, if any external lighting near the trash enclosure is warranted. Number two, if additional lighting at the southern crosswalk is warranted. And number three, if an underground irrigation <coughs> system should be incorporated in the landscape plan for phase one or for the final PUD with the other phases. Um, there are three proposed conditions for this phase. Number one, prior to village board action, the petitioner shall request a revise or shall submit a revised landscaping plan which accounts for the location of all light poles and adjust the landscape accordingly to remove conflicts. No landscaping shall be reduced or eliminated based on the adjustments. If any subsequent changes are made to the lighting plan, a revised lighting plan shall also be submitted prior to village board action of this request. Number two, all infrastructure associated with the functionality of lot two must be constructed in their entirety as designed with the plan development. Number three, all underground utilities and detention facilities are subject to the review and approval of all necessary agencies, including but not limited to IEPA sanitary, water, NPDES, MWRD, IDOT, IDNR, and the Village of Wheeling. So with that, I think we will. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of reading on your part. Please state your name and business address for the record, and if anyone else is going to be talking, I sure. don't have to swear uh, you in for this one. But uh, Nick Papa Nicholas Jr., um, 300 North Oak Avenue, Mount Prospect, Illinois. Uh, good evening, members of the Plan Commission. Uh, uh, again, I'm Nick Papa Nicholas, uh, president of Wingspan Development Group. Also here tonight, we have uh, Mr. Michael DiBartolo, chief school business official for District 21. Chris Coleman, uh, Vice President of Development for Wingspan. David Fleming, architect uh, with Archon Associates. Fred Thady, uh, civil engineer with Cage Civil Engineering. So okay. we um, really appreciate the time uh, that you are all taking to review this project. Um, I'll give you a little history of our family. We've been rooted in the Northwest suburbs for 43 years. My father, Nick Sr., started uh, Nicholas and Associates is our core business. Uh, we build lots of schools, uh, municipality work, public works facilities, park and rec uh, throughout Illinois, but mainly focused in the northwest suburbs. Um, we've done quite a, a bit of redevelopment work uh, in the greater area. Uh, our horizon on projects like this is forever. Our family has reinvested in local communities and really we're generational type planning. Uh, my father was kind of a visionary, setting myself and my siblings up, and we're doing the same for our kids. So we're excited about this opportunity on Dundee Road. Um, you know, the process has taken quite some time uh, for us, and you know, we're kind of glad that it elongated because District 21 became part of this project. Uh, as you guys have a beautiful anchor building here, uh, a, a sense of community, with a project of this magnitude uh, really brings a lot of street cred to the development. Um, and so couldn't be happier uh, that District 21 uh, came to the table and was interested and showed interest in this. And I think it really adds a lot of value to the project. Um, with that, you know, Marcy, I don't know if we want to go through the slides. Um, what we have, and we could, if there's any specific questions, I'm not an architect, nor do I play one. Um, you know, this is a three-story masonry building, heavy masonry detailing, um, really a building that will stand the test of time. Um, I look at this as a 50 to 75 year old, 75 year type construction. Um, Archon Associates has been a fixture in the school district uh, design world for 45 years. We've completed many projects with them. Uh, so uh, our team, 
along with District 21, has spent quite a bit of time, what you see with this end product, and we think it's uh, going to be a focal point uh, for the village. So I'm happy to you know, speak to any of the conditions. I know, Marcy, you'd mentioned a couple of the things. Um, if we want to just jump into those uh, lighting related ones. Um, as far as the trash enclosure goes, there is existing lighting on the district, the current district property where we reorientated the trash enclosure to. We feel there's ample light coverage uh, that would take care of any dark areas. Um, should there not be, we have no issue adding an additional uh, light pole uh, to cover that area. Um, irrigation, oh, there was one other lighting item. Uh, the uh -huh. other one, there was a, an area that we could potentially relocate uh, one of the existing uh, light poles uh, per the photometric plan. Uh, if there was concern about, again, a dark area, we would, no issue whatsoever uh, relocating one of the light poles. Um, as it relates to irrigation, the District 21 uh, property will be irrigated. Uh, that pro project will be a design build uh, engineered scope. So that would be something that uh, the irrigation contractor would come back in for permitting uh, with the village uh, for the actual zones and connections and all of that good stuff. But all of the landscaping will be uh, irrigated, not only on this phase, but then as we get onto the rest of the development, which will be back in front of you all uh, in a few weeks. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions or make our team available to uh, discuss any detailed points. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's mix things up. Uh, Commissioner Yednick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just one quick one. Um, when I was looking at the construction plan set, there's uh, an alternate east and an alternate south elevation, and I couldn't my eye wasn't good enough to catch the distinctions between those and which one are you planning to build? Let's see. I mean, is that something that you're going to be making a decision in now? It's no, a, on we're, page A31 uh, and A32, it showed there were alternate views of the east and the south elevations. Oh, you want to come up? And, I kept going up and back trying to pick it out. Usually, oh, I'm, so it, okay. Got it. Is that alternate that was accepted? Yes. So that was a stair tower. So that was to take um, which one? Which which one are you referring to? I'm that? looking at the south elevation. The uh, alternate or the or the or the proposed? The know. alternate was is is accepted uh, by the school district, and that grants that gives access to that upper level. So the stairs have full access uh, directly to that level. So is that? But is but is the I guess is the is the design on page A three two the same as A three one? I didn't see a Sheet. difference in those elevations. I couldn't pick it out with my eye. I wasn't quick I enough. I don't have eight. Which is A three? I can't see the what number. It's cut off on my. Um. Well, I guess our drawings just showed. There was page A31 had the elevation north, elevation east, elevation south, yes, elevation west. Those. Then page A32 had an alternate elevation east and an alternate elevation south. And they looked the same to me. Yeah, the alternate's accepted. So the that specific call out is what is going to be constructed. And can you highlight the differences? It's just... It takes it all the way up to the roof level. So there's no distinction on the exterior? It's just interior? Uh, it, it should appear on here. I they, can't see it. Well, right, David. Okay. So the height so those of those renderings showed it perfectly? If you, want you, can, you can remove your mask when you're up by the mic so we can hear you. Those renderings show it, yeah, exactly. So that stairs is now providing roof access to the roof. And the A31 as a base bid, we were just not having roof access. Since the alternate was accepted, we are now, the roof is, basically what you see here, what we're proposing is. Uh, okay, now I see, I see the, the, no, that's the west. South, no, they still look the same to me. All right, whatever, whatever you're going to build. I guess it, it, it's probably going to be a really small 
variation. In yeah, the, basically the in the built in the building. The pier, the, basically that dropper you see on the left side, that is where the original height would be as the basement. But since we accepted the roof access, what you see here in this rendering is, is what we. Do me a favor, go back and look at your plans tomorrow because they looked identical to me. That's all I can say. I I couldn't look, find the differences, and that's what I was hoping you could point out the differences. <laughs> I still can't see the differences. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. If Thank you me. actually look at, um, I don't know, Marcy, if you want to bring that rendering up. I'm looking at the, the actual drawings. You could see the stair tower that projects higher than the rest of the roof assembly. That's, in essence, uh, what that alternate was. And that's what it looks like between the alternate and the regular view. So Got it. That's fine. Got it. Might have, it might have got a cut and paste error when you guys. Yeah, put. those architects, they sometimes forget to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. It's a nice looking building, by the way. Thank you. Commissioner Berkey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one question out of curiosity. Great looking building. Um, just wondering how long is the project supposed to take for the administration center? I believe uh, the district's looking to occupy December of 2022. At the latest, so at the latest December of 2022. So it's going to move really quickly. Great. That's all I have. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Commissioner Hyken. Uh, my questions were just asked, so I'm all good. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Marcy, did you say that there's going to be a uh, written issue of the uh, trash enclosure later on? Um, it's on the site plan. This is, it's really small. It's right here on your site plan. And here's this section of it. And, oh, actually, I think I have it blown up. Sorry. Does it include uh, yep. steel posts for the gates? Yes. Yes. And then uh, are there bollards, you have plans for bollards to protect the gate posts? Yes. Yes, yes. okay, great. Um, <clears throat> is there an, going to be a new landscape plan uh, submitted with the uh, white holes? I think that for the greater, um, the global landscape plan for the entire development, um, that's being updated. And so okay. we'll overlay the lighting within that. Okay, just for your information, the uh, large trees uh, that you have rendered in the uh, uh, landscape plan right now on the north side of the building, there I could not find any label of what kind of trees those were. Specific to the north side of Yeah, the three large shade trees on the north and northwest corner. Um, I couldn't find any identification for those. I can't really, I can't really see it on that. If they're not called out, we'll make sure that... Uh, yeah, that's it's, mainly why I'm bringing it up, yep. so that you can yep. add that to your yep. new submittal. Yeah, just make it clearer so yeah. that it can be seen. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Blanova. No question. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing? No, no, thank you. Sorry. Commissioner Riles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a curious question I have. Um, on your roof, is there, what do you plan on having up there the roof as far as like uh, habitable or not habitable but uh, occupiable space it's it's just a typical roof assembly sure the HVAC equipment okay yeah I was just curious because this day and age and uh, uh, a lot of companies uh, around the world um, you know they're trying to be more green uh, you talk about the landscaping and, and things below. Um, 
I just wondered if there was some consideration of doing anything um, green on, on, on the roof. Yeah, uh, no green, green roof assembly on, uh, on this project. At one time, there were concepts that did show uh, some exterior space uh, that employees and community members could you know, utilize, but that didn't make the project budget. So that got refined down to where there's no real occupiable space coming off of the roof assembly. So it's a tr traditional, is this a built up EPDM? Yeah, so it's a built up uh, EPDM rough, typical 30 year type warranty um, that you would see on a public project. No, I got you, I understand. Um, it was just a curious question because again, that's the direction that you know, globally, um, many companies are uh, going in that direction, and so I was wondering if that was a consideration um, regarding this project. Um, but I certainly understand. Uh, the building itself, it looks phenomenal. Um, and uh, I'm just down the street, literally, from the, the location. So it's going to be interesting to see, but uh, it's a welcome addition, I, I truly believe. But thank you. Okay, um, to tag on to that, green doesn't necessarily mean something growing up there. What about solar panels, things like that, to help reduce the cost to us taxpayers? We, yeah, Archon and all the design consultants that worked on this project inherently design uh, energy efficient buildings just with the ener current energy code. Um, as far as specific uh, green or lead uh, components, uh, I do not believe solar or photovoltaic or geothermal were considered on this project, um, but uh, definitely noted. And uh, you know, we we influ we impact we install that on many other projects, but on this specific one, it wasn't considered. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the site, the, the landscape plan shows a driveway leading to the trash enclosure, but the site plan did not. So. Might want to just tweak that. Yep, that was updated uh, just recently with okay. meeting with staff. So the uh, the new <clears throat> global site plan will be uh, updated accordingly. Now I'm looking at the the light lighting plan. I'm assuming that for the uh, the readings on this one, they did not include the lights from the London School property. Correct. So. It, they could figure that in, that would give a better idea of what the lighting's gonna be on the west side of that building. Well, you know, we'll when we look at it now, it's zero, it's dark. Right. We <laughs> so will, if they can uh, calculate that in, <clears throat> right? Noted. Uh, What's the approximate number of employees that are going to be in this building? I mean, I'm sure there's going to be lots of visitors and whatnot, but... About 40 employees in the building. Okay. And <clears throat> there's going to be, I assume, like auditoriums for meetings and things like that? So, The first floor will have, uh, the, that's where the community center is, where there'll be some wraparound services with the therapy, mental health therapy, um, job coaching, different services for the public. Second floor will be the administration, and then the third floor is all meeting space. Ah. So that would be the boardroom, and then there's classrooms, and then different small group meeting rooms to go ahead and host different events for both the community and the school district. Thank you. Could you state your name for the person oh, taking notes? Uh, Michael DiBartolo. Thank you. Um, so did we, Marcy, did we get all the information that was sort of pending? Um, um, materials and... Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anything from the fire department on this project? No, not it is in regards to this phase. Engineering? Same. All right. Any other questions from the commission? Nope. All right. This now is the condition. Did we cover those three items? 
correct. So you um, could cover the two issues of lighting. Um, the first one is if, if external lighting near the trash enclosure is warranted and if additional lighting at the southern crosswalk is warranted, we could um, just put a condition that lighting near the trash enclosure and southern crosswalk will be further addressed in phase two. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and I think we'll see a big difference when they calculate in the London property lighting. Because that's on all the time, right? Yeah. Is, is that something you're okay with? Yeah, that's fine. We, you know, we'll do uh, an updated photometric with the existing London property uh, light poles. And then as far as that crosswalk goes, uh, we could relocate the B3 fixture. Uh, to provide additional coverage, uh, we could just update the photo the photometric and include it at the next. Yeah, I land think that'll condition. probably solve the the lighting issues. No problem. Do we need a condition for the uh, irrigation? Irrigation. Yeah. yeah. So, um, give me one second. So. For the irrigation plan, I was just going to add a condition that says an irrigation plan or the addition of a note on the landscape plan shall be included with phase two of the PUD. We are, yeah, and the, the note has already been added uh, oh, it to has. our civil, so that'll be okay. shown that way. And then furthermore, uh, an actual design build engineered irrigation plan will be submitted at the time of construction for that system. Okay, yeah, and I don't know if they won't need a permit from us. So, yeah, this some, is the only... Some municipalities That's why we just want to know. Yeah. No, no. Uh, sometimes irrigation systems need, I uh, think, an RPZ to oh, up okay. to, uh, to, you know, whatever building the water is coming from. I think that's really the only component that generally needs permitting uh, for an irrigation system. Okay. Um, so the only <laughs> other question right now the first condition was about revising the landscape plan to account for all the light poles and adjusting the landscaping accordingly um, I need to know from the plan commission um, <coughs> do you want that to occur prior to village board action or can that occur with phase two mm. Okay, how about a poll? Do we want it before the village board acts on this or allow them to make changes for when they do phase two? Right, because right now the landscaping plan does not show where the lights are and there's conflicts. So where there's trees, there's light poles. So um, we need them to adjust the landscaping plan to move some trees around without reducing the amount of landscaping that's out there. So that's the concern right now. And then if there's changes that result in the lighting plan, they'll have to submit a new lighting plan. So um, we just need to know if you want that done before the village board or if they can just lump this and address it with phase two, which should be coming you know, in the next week. Uh, okay. So prior to village board or with phase two? Commissioner Hyken. Phase two. Commissioner Berkey? Phase two. Commissioner Yadnick? I wondered if we get input from the petitioner before I vote. I mean, is Phase two. I mean, we'd include That's what you would prefer? Yeah, we'd include it with all of them. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that, too. Commissioner Sprague? Yeah, my only question is, wouldn't you want it all wrapped up before you go to the board? Yeah, I think from what... We're going to be back for plan commission for what I'm going to call phase two, but then village board would be for everything. That's the goal. So one and two. So they could hopefully get to the, this is, the sixth, hopefully, the sixth December the 1st for the, for the plan commission, and then we do a quick turnaround and get them both together on December 6th for the village board. That's extremely fast. So then by having it done for phase two, they still would be 
still would have it done before. Right, that's board. assuming everything happens and everybody's yeah. reviews get done and everything gets submitted very soon. And if the fallback, it's the 19th. Yeah, the, the next village board is not till the 6th. So yep. there's, there's no village board in between today. No, right. So they would come back to the plan commission on December 1st. Right, so. Yeah. So the point being, if they're going to do phase Marcy, two, they're, they're doing it before the village anyway. Can we make that condition be that in the event of a conflict of the placement of light fixtures and landscaping, the landscaping material count won't be decreased and we'll just make an accommodation in the field? I, mean, I, think, the, I think the spirit of what you're saying is that if there's a conflict, we're not going to just remove a tree because it's in the way. And I think what we would be very willing to do and what we would ultimately do in the field either way is just move that planting material over if there is a conflict. Right, it's just typically the way we just handle landscaping is that we just hammer it all out now and the only way for us to then go and confirm it is we go back in the field and then we're just kind of like checking it all off. Yeah, and you'll so still check off. All the materials will be there, but it might not, instead of being here, it might be here. Right. Um, that's the spirit. I guess that's is up that, to the planning the spirit, commission right? if they want to. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's so long till construction. Mm -hmm. um, why do you not want to address it now? I think, I think what I'm saying is that we'll stipulate that we won't reduce the planting material count. I don't know. I mean, honestly, staff would just rather have the plans worked out. For us, it's just yeah. simpler. I totally get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's up to the plan commission, however they want to do it. I mean, if they want to make that condition that the amount of plant material won't be reduced, but that it can be addressed in the field and plans don't need to be revised, that can be up to you guys, or the plans need to be revised. I think it's easy enough on the landscape plan, we're just going to overlay the lighting. And then that'll be a final landscape plan. We'll pick up the couple of tree notations, and we should be good then. Well, that's the thing. We don't want you to take off tree notations. We want you. No, to we're not going to take them. No, oh. we're going to add the three that we're missing. No, there's areas where there's trees, yeah. and then when you look at the lighting plan, there's a light pole in the same location as a tree. So the well, landscaping with the updated has to be plan, adjusted. We'll shift the tree over. Right. That's all we're asking yeah. for. Yeah. No. Right. Correct. Okay. Easy enough. We'll update a landscape okay. plan. Okay, so to finish polling. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, Craig, uh, yeah, phase two is fine with me. Commissioner Blanova? Phase two. And Commissioner Ron? Yes, phase two. Phase two, okay. <clears throat> um, so let me just update this. So the petitioner shall submit a revised landscaping plan which accounts for the location of all light poles and adjusts the landscaping accordingly to remove conflicts. No landscaping shall be reduced or eliminated based on the adjusted landscaping accordingly to remove conflicts. Oh, hold on, let me reread it. <laughs> it's so small on my screen. The petitioner shall submit a revised landscaping plan which accounts for the location of all light poles and adjust the landscaping accordingly to remove conflicts. No landscaping shall be reduced or eliminated based on the adjustments. Um, period. Period. Well, I need to add <laughs> somewhere prior or with phase two. I, I just want to put in there that it's not by, um, I would say, with phase two. Okay. <clears throat> I'm putting that at the beginning. With phase two, the petitioner shall submit a revised landscaping plan. Okay, and then if any subsequent change. I didn't change get that. Oh, got Could it. Could you try again? <laughs> Watch is talking now. The computer's talking to you now. Okay, and the, at the end is still the same. If there's any changes to the lighting plan, a revised lighting plan shall also be submitted. Sorry, I'm still oh not my God. sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Why is my watch talking to me? Okay. So. Well, and their revised lighting plan is going to include the numbers from yeah. London. Yeah, and then if you need to move a pole, you can. If you don't, you don't. Right. Okay. Um, okay, so that was the first condition. The second condition is still the same. All infrastructure associated with the functionality of Lot 2 must be constructed in their entirety as designed with the planned development. Number three is all underground utilities and detention facilities are subject to the review and approval 
of all necessary agencies, including but not limited to IEPA, Sanitary Water, NPDES, MWRD, IDOT, IDNR, and the Village of Wheeling. And then the last one was an irrigation plan or the addition of a note on the landscape plan shall be included with phase two of the PUD. So there's no conditions that are required for prior to the village board approval. Except for phase two. <laughs> phase two is prior to the village board. No. So could, phase one could. can go completely by itself. It doesn't, if phase two doesn't happen prior to December 6th, Phase one is going completely through. So they don't need to have the landscape finished. They don't need to have the lighting addressed. Phase one is going, right. it can go all the way. And we'll deal with the other stuff when phase two comes. Wishful thinking, we're going to do it thinking. all in one. Right. Yep. <clears throat> okay. All that being said, do I hear a motion? So, so Second. Yednick and Hyken. Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Oh. Oh, well, thank you. You'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll be back on December 6th and hopefully back here on December 1st. Great. Thank you all and look forward Thank to a you. great project. Thank you all for Thank coming you. out tonight. Thank you. All right. Next we have uh, three dockets related to Masters Countertops again at 363 Alice Street, which we need to continue due to uh, what, late submission? Yeah, so prior to the last plan commission meeting, uh, the petitioner contacted me and submitted a new plan that night. So um, then they didn't do an official resubmittal with everything until a few days before the agenda was due for this meeting. So we're going to continue it until, I don't know. December 15th. Say? December 15th. And so staff already has everything. It's being reviewed by the departments and um, it'll come back. All right. So we need a motion to continue docket numbers 2021, 23A, 23B, and 2021-27. Can we do all those together, Mallory? Yeah. So moved. So you're gonna vote all together? Huh? We can't vote all together. We can't? Oh, because she puts them in a different they have docket. To be oh, different okay. Yes. Sorry. So on the first one we had Sprague and Hyken, I think. I don't think a second was made. Yeah. No, I didn't say Hyken was Hiken? second. Okay. <clears throat> it was Commissioner Hyken. Yes. And that's to continue it to a date certain of 12 15 21. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. And now the same thing for DACA 2021-23B to be continued to 12-15-21. So moved. Second. Uh, Yednak and Berkey. Commissioner Yednak. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. And finally, a motion to continue 2021-27 to 12-15-21. So moved. Second. Second. Got it. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Yednak. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. All right. Approval of minutes of the regular meeting of October 27, 2021, including the findings of fact for 2021-41, 2021-38, 2021-43A, and 2021-43B. I believe we had some corrections yes. submitted. 
Yes, they have been made. Those are taken care of. So moved. Second. Is that a voice vote? Or? Um, oh, yeah, this is a voice vote. So, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. <clears throat> Other business. Marcy, you have a schedule for us. Yes, we have the 2022 schedule ready. I just wanted to point out that the second meeting in August, August 24th, is uh, slated for the joint village board plan commission meeting. Yeah, you could still have put it on the list. Yeah, I know. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> I, <don't> know. <laughs> I might plan my vacation. Thought about that earlier. I might plan my vacation around that gap. Well, we didn't want people thinking they could get on the agenda. Oh, well, you could. Yeah, I know. Okay. You can asterisk it. <laughs> I could have put two asterisks there you on go. there. So maybe I'll update it and say no items on the agenda. Um, okay, that's the things you want. So do they? Do we need a vote or no? I get. We usually vote to approve it. Okay. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we usually do. How do we know if we're going to be on the commission next year? Hmm? How do we know if we're going to be on the commission? We I don't. I think my renewal. I think my renewal might be up next year. It's just approving the schedule of meetings. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're on the commission or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll mess with somebody else's schedule. <laughs> It's just uh, that these are going to be, this is what kind of the schedule for the year is. All right. No. So I need a, a motion to accept this schedule? Yeah. So moved. Second. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Yednak? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Other business? Starting down now with Mr. Hyken. Nothing, thank you. Mr. Berkey. Nothing from me, thank you. Commissioner Yednick. Nothing from me, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one item. Uh, our meeting two weeks ago was canceled, uh, and that would have been Commissioner Berkey's one-year anniversary. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. Congrats. Been an eventful, That's all I have. An eventful one year. Commissioner Blanova, any other business? Commissioner Riles. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, just want to uh, make a, a, a mention that uh, I'm still learning, but I found out a little bit more about the Squid Game. Have you guys heard of that? Heard of it. I don't know anything about it. Learning a little bit more. I had the, uh, the pleasure and the opportunity to uh, witness the kids game at the uh, Korean Cultural Center a couple weeks ago. And uh, it was pretty uh, interesting and enlightening. And I actually had an opportunity to talk with the, uh, the president, uh, Dr. Yoon Kim, uh, and the executive director over there. So it was, uh, it was interesting, pleasant afternoon, but uh, I think there were 122 participants um, in the squid game. So. Uh, it was it was good to see um, uh, that it's happening in Wheeling at the Korean Cultural Center, and uh, they're opening up their doors to the community to learn more about their culture. But I had an opportunity to be a part of that, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you. I understand uh, some of you went to the ribbon cutting at uh, Meat and Potatoes. How'd that go? Very good. Yeah. Good. How many of you, two, three of you, what? Yeah. Yeah, everyone that I talked to said that their food is very, very good. And they, they have a lot of, out from there a lot of uh, it was good. choices. Good. I was hoping to make it, but it didn't work out. <clears throat> uh, let's see, anything else? I guess the lighting is this Sunday. Yes, the Lights Around Wheeling event is this Sunday at Friendship Park at the northeast corner of Milwaukee and Dundee, and the festivities begin at 4.30 in the afternoon. Do we know where we're supposed to park? <clears throat> Anywhere you can. Okay. <laughs> I, I parked in the big Korean spa last year, <laughs> <laughs> or two years ago maybe, I don't remember, um, whenever I was there last From time. what I hear, the parade is extremely short this year, <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any info about 
Um, it usually only goes from strong down to the corner. And what I picked up at a police group meeting was it's going from Solex to the corner. <laughs> so oh. it sounds like you're just gonna put Santa Claus in the back parking lot and bring him around. I don't know. We'll see. Um, anything from either of you guys? Any? Nothing from me. Okay. No, just staying busy with all the projects is came across your here today and but yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. Um, then how about a motion to adjourn? So so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. We are adjourned. Who made the move motion? Sprague motion, hike and second.